Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Prime News on my media prime. You're watching from uh, Douala, the economic capital of the country. My name is Gienda Peldrin Blanche King. The second ordinary session of Parliament for the 10th legislative year has begun effectively with four bills tabled today of the National Assembly, which, when adopted by the majority, shall authorize the President of the Republic of Cameroon to ratify some cooperation agreements. Away from that, burglary is on the rise, affecting state institutions. Recently, three state institutions have been burgled within a short period of time, according to a confirmed reports, recording acts of vandalism, damaging important documents. The situation has sparked widespread criticisms as Cameroonians or citizens question the effectiveness of forces of law and order. Dolingonde in the following report. The recent rate of burglary attacks in some major institutions in Cameroon is beginning to raise eyebrows, with many online users claiming the bad fate, a well-calculated mafia by who and the God knows. It all started with the attacks on the Supreme State Audit. Then, only recently, Cameroon's Directorate of Taxation's building was burgled on the night of Tuesday, June 8, 2021, with offices broken in two. However, the country's finance minister, Louis-Paul Moutouzi, has reassured taxpayers that the directorate will continue to do its work diligently while investigations have been opened to bring the perpetrators to book. But the dissatisfaction remains the fact that many Cameroonians are wondering how the break-in happened in the first place, given the location of the structure is well guarded, plus its proximity to the gendarmerie and army rescue units in Yawande. While Cameroonians were still dealing with that, another press release signed by the president of the Cameroon Employers Association with the French acronym GICAM has also announced a burglary attack in his institution's office in Bonanjo, Douala. Celestine Tawamba, president of JICAM, brought this information to the lamplight, stating that on the 9th of June 8, breaking June 9th, the JICAM head office at Bonanjo was burgled by some unidentified persons. In the press release, he further said many offices were also broken in two, with many documents under observation. While an investigation has been opened to determine Minister of Public Works Emmanuel Nganujimesi has announced the resumption of rehabilitation works along the Baba Juba Mendes stretch of road. He was speaking yesterday in Yawunde during a meeting with parliamentarians, mayors, and uh, opinion leaders of Mezam. He discussed measures to accompany contractors towards the completion of this uh, project or this work, which, according to uh, Public Work Minister, was halted following an attack carried out by uh, pro separationists or pro secessionists. George Ewane has been appointed technical advisor at the, the presidency. The journalist was appointed by the head of state, President Paul Beer. He has for over two decades reported on the issues or activities of the Unity Palace, as Nora Kakebi reports. George Ewane Ngide, CRTV senior journalist, has been appointed technical advisor at the presidency of the Republic of Cameroon. The former host of CRTV's Inside the Presidency returns to the Unity Palace this time around as a member of staff. His appointment was made on June 9, 2021 by the President of the Republic. Professor George Ewane, who holds a PhD in Political Communication and Public Relations in British Literature, hails from the Kupe Maneguba Division of the Southwest Region of Cameroon. Talking about his success, Ewane is the Director of the Presidential Coverages where he has a control team of over 33 reporters, technicians, and others, all involved in the coverage of the activities of the President of the Republic, the President of the National Assembly, the Prime Minister of the country, as well as the First Lady. Aside from being a renowned journalist with the state broadcaster, Professor George Ewanengide is also a senior lecturer at the University of Yaoundé, where the associate professor dishes out lectures on British literature to both undergraduates and postgraduate students in the departments of English and bilingual studies. He has several publications to his credit, which include Dynamic Organicism and the Romantic Imagination. And Can a Man Be Free If Woman Be a Slave? Just to mention but these. An erudite professor, a senior journalist, a legend. Today, George Ewane is a technical advisor at the Presidency of the Republic. 
three alleged bandits arrested recently in Konsamba have been presented to uh, the press during their presentation the express or explained how they were able to successfully carry out their operations details with Gladys Bomotongina in the French language Nous sommes dans la ville de Konsamba département du Mungo où trois présumés malfrats ont récemment été appréhendés après avoir réussi avec succès le braquage d'une station de pétrole nommée Tank Oil. Il s'agit des nommés Emmanuel Samuel, Longwen Bruno et Mimitan Awa, où deux d'entre eux seraient ressortissants de la ville de Douala. Le présumé Longwen Bruno relate les faits et raison de ce braquage. Opération d'appréhension réussie grâce à la vigilance et l'expertise des forces de maintien de l'ordre. Je me suis lancé dehors et au niveau de, de RAS, de la boîte de nuit qu'on appelle Timis, je suis tombé sur une moto abandonnée, du moins ce qui semblait abandonné, ce qui m'a intrigué à cette heure de la nuit qu'une moto soit abandonnée. Un tour de la moto nous a permis de constater qu'il y avait des, des bouteilles de jus. Or, oh, lors de ce braquage, le jus avait été emporté. Euh, nous avons planté et quelques minutes après, l'auteur principal de ce braquage s'est amené à esquiver sa moto. Mais nous avons eu la bonne intuition de l'interpeller. Et après plusieurs questions, on s'est rendu compte qu'il était effectivement le propriétaire de la moto. Et nous l'avons embarqué quelques, je crois, 30 ou 40 minutes après. Nos éléments qui étaient postés sur les lieux ont pu interpeller les deux autres qui étaient cachés dans un kiosque Orange Monet. Rendu au poste, les enquêtes ont été immédiatement ouvertes. Et en tout cas, ils sont passés aux aveux, aux aveux complets. Les présumés bandits, ayant reconnu les faits, séjournent à présent dans les cellules du commissariat central de la cité des deux monts, attendant répondre de leurs actes devant les juridictions compétentes. Personnel from the National School of Penitentiary Administration in Napoya have received training on administrative drafting and letter writing to enhance their skills as agents in the promotion of the United Nations Peace Mission. This was during a one-day intensive or intensive capacity building seminar that brought together about five staff from the institution. Clarice Ekowe completes this story in the following report. Eyes glued to the main facilitator with important notes taken down. These are personnel of the National School of Penitentiary Administration in Naboya who are receiving training on administrative drafting. During this one-day intensive capacity building workshop that brought together over 50 staff of the institution, focus was on how to write administrative, private and business letters a daily challenge to many of these penitentiary administration staff. I've shared with them uh, the different ways administration communicate and also uh, how uh, to take initiative and put on in writing instruction, give orientation to make sure we get the best out of the administration to make sure public service function smoothly. Cognizance with the vital role of the penitentiary administration in enhancing the United Nations peacekeeping mission, the director of the National School of Penitentiary Administration in Nabuya, Ganju Mama Lamia, and join these participants to take the training seriously. Administrative drafting is very, very important because every day uh, administrative correspondences are being made. So there is always need to refresh the memories of the collaborators to know that these are the modalities of writing administrative correspondences and what have you. 
So we're trying to refresh the memories of collaborators so that they should not uh, be distracted at any time that they are writing administrative correspondences. So they should go straight to the point as it is actually previewed. With knowledge acquired, these participants say it will go a long way to enhance their skills in administrative writing. Actually, first, the how to present a letter, as I earlier said, uh, because we there is a format in presenting administrative uh, letters, which we're told, and there are characteristics of which we have to respect within the uh, the drafting of an initiative correspondent. Through this training, it is no doubt that these penitentiary administration personnel are sure to meet up with the changing dynamics in the administration nowadays, which entails writing of clear and precise administrative correspondences. Some families have been rendered homeless after a fire incident uh, that consumed a building in Tiko, southwest region of uh, the country. The fire incident or the fire uh, reduced the building on the night of Tuesday, June 8, 2021. Von Quinta completes the story. Several families have been rendered homeless in Sabibi, Kwata, a neighborhood in Tiko, Fakot Division, southwest region of Cameroon. This is what is left of another 40 room apartment that was consumed by wire flames, which began at about 9 30 p.m. on the night of Tuesday, June 8, 2021. <laughs> As I went in back in my own room, I have to retire on my own side. A tenant who narrates what transpired says all efforts by Nemos to put out the ravaging flames was futile. So he struggled. He struggled to lose the fire. There was no way. So it, came, it, it, it happens that we are, we, are, we, are, we are happy because no one had injured. Asked how the fire began, the tenant who witnessed it say it is more of a spiritual thing. I want to tell them, I want to tell the people it's a spiritual thing because I don't know, I don't know how the fire came about. I was inside my room, so they can, I cannot tell people how the fire started. Victims of the June 8th fire incident say all of their belongings have been reduced to ashes as attempts to get a few items out of the house failed. Though no human life was lost. Or injuries sustained, material damage was enormous as occupants estimate about 10 million. Meanwhile, investigations have been opened to determine the cause of the fire. We stay in Tiko, where commercial bike riders and taxi men in Tiko subdivision in the southwest region have started a cleanup exercise, joining forces with uh, the divisional officer Vo Armstrong to keep the municipality clean. Details in the following report compiled by Eileen Summer. Unity, togetherness, and strength best describes the gesture made by the union of commercial bike riders as well as taxi men in Tiko municipality who came out in their numbers to carry on with Operation Keep Tico Clean by staying off the steering and pedals from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Wednesday, June 9th to keep all neighborhoods that make up Tico subdivision tidy, which is in line with the objective of the administrator of the area, Mvo Armstrong, the divisional officer. For six hours, the men and boys cleared all clogged drainages, filled in potholes, clearing off ways among others. All stubborn taxi drivers and bike riders who plied the streets on that day were hijacked from their vehicles and motorbikes to join the cleaning squad while their passengers stood confused by the roadside. He gave us a document few days backward instructing us to follow the clean up campaign and today is the first day that we are executing what the what we say about the document. It says the clean up supposed to start from 6 a.m. right up to 12. So the rest of the taxi drivers we have sent them where they are supposed to go. And the other ones we are sending them in the port taxis so that they can fill some portals where you can see that the places are not good. Okay. At least people can have three ways of doing 
and Joe, our Joe is emphasizing a lot about this cleanup because he told us that when you keep your environment clean, illness automatically disappears. Illness comes from comes from treatment. Moroso, the representative of the drivers' union, was tasked by Mvo Armstrong to track down unauthorized taxi men and bike riders in the municipality to maintain orderliness. Which means if you don't have the, an authorization to circulate, you are not supposed to circulate. But if you have an authorization to circulate, you are free to circulate. At the end of the day, the mission was accomplished. At the end of the day, Operation Keep Tico Clean was accomplished with almost all neighborhoods in Tico touched from Likumba right up to Mutengene and the exercise will henceforth be carried out every two weeks in Tico subdivision. You're watching Prime News on my major prime on our health page. We'll talk about food safety. The month of June is the month to raise awareness on the importance of a safe, clean, and healthy food. Food safety is a routine in the preparation, handling, and the storage of food to avoid foodborne diseases and uh, possible or poisoning. Yes, possible poisoning as Bokengo Kemia worthy reports. Healthy and nutritious food is everyone's right. However, 600 million people around the world are victims and sufferers of contaminated food. With children being the most hit, this gives birth to malnutrition and birth defects, as well as adding to the burden of killer diseases around the world such as cancer, diarrhea, kidney or liver failure, paralysis, brain defects and more. More than 600 million people fall ill and 420,000 die every year from eating contaminated food. Children are the most vulnerable. According to the World Health Organization, foodborne diseases constitute an estimated loss of 33 million years of healthy lives and about 420,000 deaths yearly. Nobody should die from eating food. These are preventable deaths. In these trying times, we have a collective responsibility to ensure safe, healthy and nutritious food. Worthy of note is the fact that most foodborne diseases are preventable. At the same time, agriculture and food producers need to adapt good practices and businesses must make sure food is safe. When food safety is improved, we reduce hunger, malnutrition and infant mortality. Children miss fewer days at school, adults increase their productivity, and the strain on health systems is reduced. Nonetheless, everyone has a role to play, from the production to processing and selling, as well as stocking, cooking, serving, and storing food. Proper hygiene for safe food is paramount today for better life, healthier future, and stronger tomorrow. Thanks, Bukengo Kemia Worthy. In sports, Professor uh, Nasez Mwele Kombi was on site yesterday to evaluate the progress or readiness of sports complex to host the African Cup of uh, Nations. He also debunked rumors circulating uh, that suggest Cameroon has been stripped of uh, his position to host the African Cup of Nations. Details with Etape Kante. Saluer d'abord la mobilisation des ouvriers sur le chantier, puis vérifier l'état d'avancement des travaux. Enfin, faire le point sur la situation de l'organisation de la prochaine Coupe d'Afrique des Nations Football était l'objectif de la descente du ministre des Sports et de l'Éducation Physique sur le site du complexe sportif d'Olimbi hier, mercredi 9 juin 2021. Il était accompagné des représentants du ministre de la Communication, du gouverneur du centre et des autres personnalités sur le terrain. Il est à noter que, d'après les observations de Monsieur le ministre des Sports, les assurances sont données pour la réception provisoire du stade en fin août, suivie de celle de l'hôtel, du cinéma et du centre commercial. La pose des écrans géants est prévue pour le même mois et sera aussitôt suivie de la fixation de la deuxième rangée d'éclairage du stade principal, sans oublier la pose du tartan sur la piste d'athlétisme. Celle des écailles du pangolin sur la toiture du stade se poursuit sereinement. Cette visite d'inspection intervient dans un contexte où des réactions divergentes au sujet de l'effectivité de l'organisation de la Cannes 2022 au Cameroun 
fuse un peu de partout, sur la toile, dans les réseaux sociaux. Si certains pensent que le pays de Roger Mila ne sera pas prêt le jour dit, pour le ministre des Sports, Nassis Mouel et Combi, c'est le contraire. Le Cameroun est prêt. Vous me direz, bon, vous voyez que oui, vous voyez que fait partie du pays. Mais n'oubliez pas que nous avons six terrains dans de compétition qui sont prêts. D'où vient-il donc l'idée selon laquelle le Cameroun ne se met pas à 60% une réaction donnée lors d'un point de presse accordé aux médias à la fin de l'inspection. Tout est donc clair, l'organisation de la Coupe d'Afrique des Nations au Cameroun est une réalité et non une fiction. We've come to the end of today's edition of Prime News on My Media Prime. See you tomorrow at 6.30 for another edition of Prime News. The news was coordinated by Faith Tata Berenoy, produced by Ewane Elaine Nolinga. My name is Genda Pelgin Blanche King. At 7 p.m. Cameroon time, Prime R will be live with Kum Lunard. After Prime R, we would have Prime Sports, staying company of good programs on My Media Prime. Happy viewing. Good night. <laughs>